This is uh, Tuesday, September the 5th. This is our, uh, I'm sorry, not September the 5th. It is September the 10th. This is our uh, rep Board of Aldermen regular meeting for the month of September. And we are called to order. We have uh, all aldermen present except for Alderman Miller. And we'll begin with an invocation by Alderman Muhammad. With a clear heart and mind, Lord, we come to you for strength guidance as we prepare to conduct business for the town of Spencer, for the betterment of the residents. And your name, we pray for strength and guidance as stated. Amen. Please rise for the Pledge of Allegiance. The Pledge of Allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. All right, board, you have before you your agenda that we reviewed at last week's pre-agenda meeting. And um, I do have a request to add one additional recognition. We have Lynn Purvis here. She is going to uh, be making a recommendation or a recognition rather uh, to us. So we'd like to add that as uh, item 5B. And then are there any other additions or deletions to the agenda? Hearing none from the board, Mr. Francis, none for staff. Is there, is there a motion to approve the agenda? So moved. A motion by Mayor Pro Tem, second by Mr. Howe. All in favor? All right, all opposed. And the agenda is set for this evening. We will move to our recognitions, and I will turn the floor over to Mayor Pro Tem for her recognition this evening. Thank you. First of all, I want to welcome uh, Nick Bishop, Heck Sugarmire's. Uh, son-in-law son and Dawn Hatley Holsizer, uh, her niece. I'm, I'm glad that part of you, you could be here. Uh, tonight I want to recognize and honor Peggy Fuller Studemeyer Jamel. And I went with all of her names because all of her names are important in this town. She was a longtime Spencer resident who passed away recently at 98. Not only was she a resident, she was a business owner. Almost all of you, probably everyone in this room, has heard of or had the privilege of going shopping at Studemeyer's here in Spencer. I had the privilege of knowing her and her family very well since her daughter Tish was one of my good friends who graduated with me from North Rowan in 1967. Peg owned and operated Studemeyer Furniture Store here in town from 1987 to 2015 after her first husband, Jay Sudemeyer, passed away. However, she had worked there since 1940 and was a career woman as well as a wife and mother. She balanced her roles very well with grace, charm, organization, wit, and determination. She was actually a trailblazer here as a career woman. There are probably not many families in Spencer or with Spencer roots who don't have a piece of Studemeyer in their home, even today. I know I have end tables, I have a bedroom suit, and a lamp I saved my own money for when I was nine years old to buy for my parents, which is now in my bedroom. I also have my hope chest from Elaine Hope Chest, which my parents gave me when I graduated. Uh, from North Rowan. And I think I'm correct in uh, remembering that Sudemeyer gave all the young ladies graduating a miniature chest, and I still have that too. What That's a wonderful right. tradition. <laughs> I was 66, I was, that was 66 years ago. That's a long time to have some of Sudemeyer in my home, but I will always have some of Sudemeyer in my home. Peg was always available in Sudemars for customers and friends. And if you were a customer, you were also a friend. She was a welcoming presence who kept folks coming back. She was the one who set up payments for young career couples and families starting out and took the payments at the store. I remember uh, Coach Secrets and I, that was one of the first accounts we had and also one at Lomax's here in Spencer. Always letting you know how important you were to her and that she was appreciated your business. 
I had the wonderful opportunity to get to know her very well through family vacations because I got invited to go along on a lot of the Sudermeyer family vacations because Tish and I both loved to read. And we would read on a vacation, sometimes as many as 10 books between us. And we had fun discussing them and everything. We always had a good time together. And they took me places I had never been. The first time they took me to the mountains, and it was up towards Bowen Rock. I was young in elementary school, probably eight or nine years old. And I had a nosebleed. <laughs> I was a Piedmont girl, and the elevation caused the nosebleed. And of course, I freaked out, but Peg took action right away and took care of me and got me uh, calmed down and told me what was happening. And I felt very secure with her. She was a warm and loving wife, mother, and mother-in-law. She became my friend as I reached adulthood. My life, like many others, was enriched by her. She and her family left a legacy of commitment and perseverance and quality service here in our little town. I am glad the name Sudemeyer remains on the building, and you can see it right from the, whatever that place is called now, it was Kangaroo, but I think it's something else, the parking lot, Sudemeyer Furniture, and the year that it was started uh, here in Spencer. They had a 132-year history with us here in town, so this is a salute to Peg and the Sudemeyer families for making us all so much better through their uh, actions of owning a business and being wonderful neighbors and friends. Thank you. Thank you, Mayor Pro Tem. All right, our next recognition, uh, we'll uh, ask Lynn Purvis to come forward. Good evening, Mr. Mayor, Good evening. Board of Aldermen. Um, each year, the Spencer JCs host an annual Distinguished Service Award Banquet to honor and recognize individuals who have gone above and beyond within their community. Several years ago, there was a realization that some individuals kind of got left out <laughs> and had passed away. And with that, in, that thought in mind, the Spencer JCs decided to create a special JC Memorial Award to recognize those individuals. We would like to dedicate and present this memorial plaque to the town of Spencer to be hung in the lobby of Town Hall for all of the community to see and celebrate as well. At this time, I would like Mayor Williams to come forward to accept the flag on behalf of the town and thank you so much for your time this evening. Thank you. Each each time we add somebody we'll put add their name to the top. There's some are already some very uh, important names on this. So we've I already got Howard there. Everhart and we've got Clyde Miller mm -hmm. and we've already got some more in line. All right, board, we will move on to our public comment at this time, and we do have two individuals signed up for public comment this evening. And uh, just a reminder for those signed up, we'll invite you forward if you will state your name and address for the record. Uh, you will have three minutes to speak. We do have a timer um, that will be up on the screens. And so with that, we'll invite uh, Ms. Sharon Hodes forward. Good evening, board members. Good evening. Good evening. Um, it's been a while. I'll make this short. You all got my email. I'm not trying to do this on a public comment, but you do know where I stand with my thoughts. There's many, many years of my life belongs to Spencer, and I'm very surprised to see and know what I know. At the end of the day, the town of Spencer is just a village, not a county, and there should be no way our taxes should be more than the counties. Okay? But most of all, we need to make sure that 
the budget managing needs to be put in perspective because I even know for the last three or four years when I look at the budget, I see that some line items that could be moved where there shouldn't be the, the citizen's responsibility. We are already paying enough, okay? So keep that in mind and don't get jaded because you've been here more than two years up here on the board because that's what happens when you stay up here too long. You start forgetting about the rest of us back out here. That's another reason why I stepped down because I started realizing I'm not seeing everything because I'm too far up here. So don't forget about us back here. Don't forget to ask us what is our opinion on those things when you get ready to do that, okay? Just make sure that whatever the manager may come up with, we vote for you guys. We don't vote for him. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. All right, next is Mr. Ken Washko, Dr. Ken Washko. Thank you, Mr. Mayor and Board of Aldermen. Um, I'm Ken Washko. I own and operate Washko Family Dentistry, uh, located at 430 South Salisbury Avenue. Um, our dental office has been there for 60 years, of which I've been there 35 years. Um, reason for my comments tonight reflect my need to document and record issues that I've had many conversations with many of you about, and I thought we had resolved. Um, it's the south entrance of the South Salisbury Ave uh, to the parking lot. I was told that the entrance would be moved slightly north to accommodate the park. But after review of the town's website on the master park plan, the website reads as follows. The South Salisbury Ave driveway next to the North Carolina Transportation Museum offices will need to be closed or relocated to accommodate the park. Um, so to avoid future conflict, I would ask for a written schedule when the entrance will be altered, a reasonable timetable of when, not if, the new altered entrance will be opened. Um, and then that also should apply to the signage there. Uh, when will it be removed and then when a new sign will be uh, replacing it. I've had conversations with many of the business owners and uh, property owners and you know, we're all concerned what effects the uh, construction will have um, on our businesses. And, you know, I think uh, just something written that it acknowledges the effects of the town and what they're going to do to mitigate the effects of the construction, you know, would ease our fears. So, you know, we've been to a lot of the meetings the town uh, had, uh, been to the organizational meetings and the development ones, but. If it's not written, it didn't happen from what I understand. It's kind of like uh, the issue we had with the paving of the access road in the back. So, if, you know, you could give me something written so I, I know and, you know, I can review it. We can go back to it. That'd be great. So thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Just a minute. Thank you. <laughs> All right. So that is the end of public comment. I will, uh, in a moment, ask uh, the manager to speak. To that item because I think uh, we do need to clarify that it is not being closed, it is being adjusted by a few feet in one direction. So, um, but we'll, we'll get to that in a moment. Have we received any other written correspondence? I have not. Yes, okay, sir. thank you very much. We will move from public comment now into our consent agenda. Or do you have your consent agenda before you? There are four items on the consent agenda. Is there a need to pull any of the items from the consent agenda this evening for further discussion? And if not, is there a motion to approve? So moved. Motion by Mr. Muhammad. Second. Second by Ms. Moody. All in favor? All right, all opposed? And the consent agenda is approved. All right, we are going to receive an update on the 2024 Spencer Holiday Caravan Committee. I'll invite uh, Heather Racino forward to give that update and Lynn Purvis. Good evening. Tonight I would like to take a minute to inform the community about the planning of the new Christmas parade that will be happening in Spencer. Spencer's Holiday Caribbean Parade will be taking place on November 27th with takeoff being around 6.30 p.m. This event will be one to light up the town with all of our floats being Christmas light themed. Spencer's Christmas Holiday Caravan Committee is asking for the town's support 
with our parade, just as you have in previous years. We want to continue to build upon this new adventure in partnership with the town's people, local businesses, and local government so that our town can continue to steam ahead while retaining and celebrate a celebration that started over 70 years ago. We look forward to serving the community and allowing the time for celebration and fellowship with family and friends and the community during the event. If you're interested in assisting with the parade, please let me know. I will be happy to add you to the email list. <laughs> Very good. Well, thank you all for the update. That is exciting news. Um, you know, I think everybody in the community and, and in the county were worried about what might happen, but uh, it's good to hear that we've had community members step up and want to keep the tradition going. So thank you all for leading the charge and all those that have been interested in, uh, in volunteering. Uh, board, any questions at this point for, uh, for these ladies? You have a meeting tomorrow evening, correct? Right here. Six thirty. Here, okay, it's at eight thirty, correct? Okay. I hope it don't take that long, but <laughs> yes. <laughs> okay, I just want to make sure citizens knew that, and maybe yes. some new people will show up. And you're going to go back to the original name for the parade, the Holiday Caravan. It's we're adding Spencer's to it. Okay. Um, oh, that's good. Before it was just the Holiday Caravan. Yeah. Okay. And we're adding. Spencer's because it's ours now. And I do know that, you know, I think you and I talk, the folks in East Spencer are really interested in you know, being a yeah. part and helping yeah. them with planning. And and they and are included on great. the emails. It's right. wonderful. I'm glad to see yeah. our Northern Rowan County community is coming yeah. together to, to make this happen. I had a conversation at breakfast this morning with some people who are from this general area and still are in here. They mentioned that Miss Universe had been here back years ago, but JC's had brought yep. her here. Yeah, yeah. Oh, wow. well, we used to have them all. We used to have South Carolina, North Carolina, Universe, mm -hmm. and different merchants that were sponsored on the day. Mm -hmm. And then Freedom Supper, and then they would sign up for the parade. But. Yep. Um, and we do have a Lori Wilson and Coleman Wilson are working on um, food trucks to set up on 5th Street and down around the high school area for lineup people, since that is usually dinner time. Yeah. Um, I know I'm going to get hungry, so <laughs> somebody else I'm sure will. And they will have just marked in, most of them will have just marked in the yeah. golf food mm -hmm. And we may have to tweak the time. I mean, we're set to 6.30, but depending on how long it takes, you know, the last band to get through Salisbury and load up and... Yeah. Back around, you know, we may be staggering a little bit, but that'll well, be okay. We'll just tweak it and let it go. I just want to thank all of you that are working on it for stepping up and doing this. I think it's wonderful, and I think it's going to be a big success. Yeah. And I know it will grow some every year. So. Yeah. And I want to remind all the area churches, especially in the North Rowan area, this is a great opportunity for you to participate in the parade too by sponsoring a float or entering something else. So you might want to talk at your churches and see about that. Okay. Thank y'all very much. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you very much. All right. The next item relates to a temporary amendment to the Winterfest Special Event Agreement. But before we get to that, since it's kind of along the lines of uh, this is along the lines of construction with the park and how the Winterfest uh, event will be a little bit different uh, this year. Um, Peter, you want to kind of give a quick update relative to park construction, uh, when construction is estimated to start, and then also maybe specifically to address Mr. Wasco's concerns. Sure. Thank you, Mayor and members of the board. The uh, park construction is 
on track to start in October. Our contractor, uh, Ike's Construction, we're working with them uh, on getting all the documents uh, underway, but we are targeting an October 1st groundbreaking as part of our National Night Out event. And uh, at first, they we had targeted that for starting construction. They've asked about can we, and I think it would be more of the early mobilization, they've asked if it's even possible to maybe start even sooner, maybe the 26th of September. Uh, we don't, we haven't issued any notice to proceed yet. We need to get through the, the contract execution first, but they are eager to get started. It's a nine month performance on the uh, construction for substantial completion. And then in terms of the driveway, uh, yes, it's not a closing of the driveway. We had uh, discussed that with neighbors and worked all that out. Uh, many months ago that the driveway would be re relocated. Uh, I think some of the master planning documents preceded that and you know they were written at a time when that that was the, the terminology but but it is going to be a relocated driveway um, that approximately how many feet? I think the driveway from what I can tell on the plans I'm looking at appears to be a 30 foot uh, wide uh, driveway with two 12 foot travel lanes within it and a planted uh, island that will contain the in terms of the sign the idea is to relocate the sign as well and, and it would be within the island uh, within that driveway area so basically the relocation is only uh, a few feet still between the transportation museum foundation and where the existing driveway is right now correct okay all right and then as far as schedule and everything like that, you know, once obviously we get through and know what the schedule is from the contractors, we'll have to do some dialogue with them about their phasing plan. Yes. For when they'll be actually relocating that driveway, when the new signage will go in and everything like that. And so. we will know that before the work starts. Uh, after we get our contract executed, we anticipate within about two weeks uh, a Gantt chart, in other words, a schedule. Right. Uh, day by day for the entire nine months, so we'll we'll know more specifics about different types of uh, work and phasing as the project progresses. Uh, we'll know that all up front. And I think taking in Dr. Washko's concerns, making sure that we communicate that those concerns with the contractor, so that they're aware and they can make sure that we're all communicating about schedule for when that driveway gets relocated, how Certainly. they're going to handle the replacement of the signage and everything like that so that there's not a, a gap in access or a gap in, uh, in signage being up. And, and I can certainly, I will, I will make sure uh, to reach out to our neighbors here and let them know we are going to have an on-site meeting uh, prior to construction starting and I'll reach out to our neighbors to make sure they're aware and they can join if they like. Thank you. All right. The, uh, the item on the agenda is to, for the manager to execute a temporary amendment to the Winterfest Special Event Agreement. So Mr. Franzese will let you walk, or Mr. Deese will let you walk uh, walk us through this. Yeah, I'm, I'm happy to, to take this, and uh, Mr. Deese can jump in if needed, but the uh, a year ago we had a, an agreement put in place with the Spencer Partnership that outlined the uh, nonprofit's responsibilities and the town's responsibilities as it comes to putting on our Winterfest event each year. Of course, the general uh, frame of that event is a two weekends, uh, in the first two weekends in December, and our role is primarily, uh, in addition to the financial support we provide as the town, also providing the space, uh, we provide the insurance coverage, and we provide in-kind services. Of course, the Spencer Partnership's role has been uh, to do everything else, uh, raise the money and, and take on the the uh, operating of the event and uh, with the park construction this year our property is not going to be available for the event so the organizers have worked with our neighbors uh, to uh, get permission to use the remaining of areas of the shopping center moving it that way and so what what this is before you is an amendment uh, to, to our agreement with the Spencer partnership to involve the other uh, neighbors and property owners in uh, in this area, uh, so that everybody's showing their their uh, agreement to uh, the use of the property or access uh, changes and that sort of thing. And it's just set up to be for this year's event, and then it'll sunset and we'll revert back to the 
uh, event, the agreement from last year that is designed to automatically renew. My understanding, obviously, that's for the single weekend, and then I think they have some events during the week. Correct. I I believe that's uh, I, I believe that's the. I can't remember if it's is it the week following for the private. I think there is a private events versus yeah. the typical public events. Yes. Yeah, so I think the model the last couple of years has been the the week in between the two weekends. There's been some uh, private events for uh, some of the sponsors. And, and I think that will take place so we can adjust the dates on this. One, one thing I should mention is the request is for the board to um, authorize you know, me to execute this, but it's really approving it in substantial form so we can fine tune um, any, of, any of the final language that we need. And I think also the intent is to, to help to maintain some parking for our businesses, correct? Yes. Yes. Yeah. yeah. There, there will be certain areas, of course. That, well, the, I guess the general the thing to say about parking is, uh, most of the impact on the parking will be at times when most of the businesses yeah. are closed. So, yeah. um, uh, but yes, that's been the conversation between the the Winterfest organizers and the neighbors. All right, board. Are there any questions on this uh, amendment to the agreement? for 2024. And if there is not, is there a motion to approve the agree amendment to the agreement in substantial form, recognizing that there may be uh, uh, non-substantive uh, changes uh, as this is finalized with all the parties? So moved. Motion by Ms. Moody, is there a second? Second. second. Second for Mr. Muhammad. Any further discussion on this item? All in favor. All right. All opposed. And that is approved unanimously. All right. We will move on to our departmental reports, and I'll invite Mr. Blunt forward for our planning report. Mayor, members of the board, I have a 36-slide presentation for you tonight, since you didn't let me do anything else tonight. Just kidding. You have a copy of my report? In your files, we glad to answer any questions you might have. Thank you, sir. Board, are there any questions on the planning report that's in your packet this month? I did have. Uh, excuse me. A um, couple of things <clears throat> that were mentioned. Um, some fencing. Is that fencing for the uh, construction, or is that fencing for something else? There was some discussion about fencing behind the building, and we were uh, going through the process of uh, determining what type of fencing would be allowed for securing the rear of the buildings behind us. So that was just staff level discussion about that. Okay, and um, I had asked about the uh, individual who was speaking to um, the right to speech. We had an individual come in and ask questions concerning uh, the town's regulation of uh, free speech in the downtown area. Uh, we do not have any regulations controlling free speech, and I explained that to her. Uh, she had to stay off of private property unless she had permission, and that she could be cited for disturbing the public peace if she got too loud. Uh, I understand from the police department that she has gotten too loud from time to time and they have taken time to talk to her, uh, but at this point I don't think any citations have been issued and certainly no arrests have been made. And then about that donut that you <laughs> ate and gained a pound, it tell a me big, so I can avoid big, big, that. Big, big, big <laughs> Any other questions on planning? All right, thank you, Mr. Blunt. Thank you. All right, move on to code enforcement, Chief File. Good evening, Mr. Mayor, members of the board. Good evening. Good evening. I have provided the monthly code enforcement report. Um, it again is a very busy uh, time of the year. You can tell that we're still concentrating heavily on our overgrowth issues. Um, we've got 17 pending NOVs out right now. Um, if you notice, the notice of bills are creeping up a little bit now. We've got five notice of bills out, um, and the way we'll be handling that, obviously, uh, we'll be coming back to the board 
um, after uh, after we've given them some time um, on those bills, and we've let the fine sit for a little bit. So we're trying to be uh, receptive and work with the individuals. Um, we do have a few of our uh, trouble houses. If you remember, I mentioned, uh, I guess about two months ago, that we had about 10 target homes that had um, more than one violation, so homes that have substantial violations, and we've been working with some of those. So we've seen some improvement. There's still a lot, of, you know, a long way to go on that, um, but we are working with them, and that uh, that's kind of the intent for what uh, I'll be having the code officer do is he'll transition to more of those housing issues as the uh, overgrowth issue winds down as we get to a little bit clo uh, colder weather. So um, hopefully we'll have some good positive information in the next month or two on that. But I will uh, try to answer uh, any code enforcement questions you may have. All right, thank you. Board, any uh, questions on code enforcement for Chief Bob? Uh, there's one um, falling, uh, falling structure on uh, North Salisbury Avenue. We would have to pull up exactly which one it is. It's on the second page, about halfway down, between high grass and high grass. <laughs> it's a big deal with all of it, definitely. Um, yeah, I would have to pull up some information individually on that. Um, it, you know, we've got a few of them that uh, I'm sure y'all are aware of, a few uh, dilapidated houses that we're working with. Um, they're, and they're in various stages of repair. Um, unfortunately, there's a couple of them that are, are seeing no um, movement on the repair, so that's going to be some of the issues that we're going to work on as far as minimum housing um, on the ones that are, you know, uninhabited right now. Nobody, nobody's living on them. So do you all put date a uh, uh, tape or something around them to keep people from going there if there's a chance that something's going um, yeah it would depend on whether the structure is actually being condemned per se we don't um typically we don't move um in that direction unless there's an immediate um, need it may be listed that way on the report but unless there's some sort of immediate need um uh, as far as a structure that may collapse or whatnot but we don't have any that we um that we've worked on that direction okay. yes okay thank you okay any other questions all right, we'll move to the police report. All right, again, I've uh, provided the monthly police department report. Uh, another busy month, 2,706 uh, activities on there. Um, schools back in full swing. Unfortunately, that was a uh, flawless uh, uh, restart, I will say. Um, nothing, uh, nothing major to report there. We've uh, uh, bumped our school checks back up, so nearly 300 school checks for the month um, of August uh, in and out of our schools. Again, our park checks are really heavy. Um, with it being warm weather and people being out in our parks. Um, if you take a look at the uh, individual report for the ACE team, uh, another busy month for them. They have 54 arrests this month, um, served seven warrants, uh, seized uh, three firearms, um, 13 felony charges. So again, another productive month for them as far as uh, dealing with the criminal element that, uh, again, is passed through traffic. Um, 90, you know, probably 97%, 98%. Um, of these uh, individuals that we're encountering are passed through. They're not citizens in our town. They're passing through north to south. So uh, we are uh, taking a real hard stance on that and hopefully keeping, uh, keeping those individuals from affecting our society around here. So, um, the one good thing uh, I want to mention, uh, we're not far from it, National Night Out, October 1st. Um, so please invite all your neighbors, friends. Uh, thank you to those uh, who have been helping us out with that. So we kind of we kind of scaled back the event a little bit this year, just not knowing what our status would be with the uh, with the park out front. Um, we're still going to have uh, some activities. We'll still have uh, uh, what we call the drunk goggles and the golf cart and a few things like that. So, um, but it's going to uh, be a be a good time, I believe. Uh, Bishop Brown still providing hot dogs like he has uh, historically done. Um, we're still doing the hay rides, so there's going to be uh, be a lot of fun out here, and we do have. Uh, a few new vendors that are coming to set up with us out front. So uh, definitely, if you would share that information, we would love to have a good turnout again. And uh, fingers crossed for positive weather. It's going to be a lot better than that typical sweaty August day. So. What time was it? Uh, it starts at uh, five thirty. So we'll start setting actually setting up about four four thirty out front. Um, trying to get tables and, and tents set up, but the event actually starts at five thirty. It goes until eight o'clock. Great. Any questions on the police report? Thank you, right. sir. Thank you. All right, next is our fire department report. Good afternoon, Mayor. And Good board afternoon, and Town Manager. Yeah. Hope everything finds you well. Um, I'm sure you have a copy of this before you. Another busy month. Um, still on track for another record breaking year for 24. Um, the end of the month, the 24th through the 27th, we have several staff members going to Wisconsin to inspect the new truck 
with expected delivery probably the second week of October. Um, Wednesdays, 11 a.m., we still go to the elementary school to eat lunch with the kids. Any of you are invited at any time to join us. I know one Wednesday a month they do an early release, so they don't do a lunch. Um, it's just a matter of what day they pick to do that. Um, Calm course was held here. This is Suicide Prevention Month. Um, conversations for access to lethal means just you see someone that's having that issue, you know, you approach that situation um, and hopefully try and keep their access from medicines, firearms, and such. Uh, Fire Prevention Week starts October 7th through the 13th, and we will have open house at the station the 12th from 11 to 2. We still do have the one engineer vacancy, which we have been covering that vacant position with part-time and full-time uh, as best we can. Um, no updates on the station expansion project. We did get a quote for additional security measures with secure access doors. We are still waiting on additional quotes. And we have also begun working with Lexapol to tidy up our policies. Ward, any, uh, any questions on the fire report? Um, the individual who left, was that as a result of the break-in that was held that happened a couple of weeks ago? The individual that left. I, I don't, I don't believe so. No. 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 Okay. Okay. It was not. Okay. Good. I'm glad to hear that. It was not. And board, I don't know if you've been checking each Friday is when the update on the new apparatus uh, comes out. So if you have the, the link, I mean, Peter has sent it in a few mm -hmm. weekly updates, but you can check it each, each week. And so as of last Friday, we had a fully uh, assembled body and chassis that was painted and it really looked like a fire engine. So it's really exciting. It's been fun to check. Yeah. All right. Any other questions? It does occur to me, um, as the new kid that I never asked, are we going to be running two fire trucks when the new truck arrives, or are we retiring the old truck? So the current engine 752 will be retired. I think we're going to put that on gov deals, I believe, to sell it. That's what we planned on. Cool. Yeah, and then the current 751 will become 752 and be a basically ready reserve truck. Which helps with ISO credit. Okay. We'll, we'll have a much better reserve. Yes, than we we'll have a much more modern reserve, <laughs> for sure. All right. Thank you, sir. Thank you. All right. Next is our public works report, Mr. Taylor. Good evening, Mayor, members of the board. Good evening. Good evening. Um, all of our regular services are running on schedule. Um, we're starting to narrow down on the mowing, um, getting ready for leaf season. So uh, the leaf acts will begin the first week of October. So we'll be here before we know it. And uh, it'll be at, uh, at demand at first, just like it always is. And then it'll move into a full time type deal when we get into there. So uh, the date for the fall months giveaway is on October 5th. Uh, from 7 to 12 and you can call ahead if you want for deliveries uh, we will be doing delivery again on that morning from 7 until 12. Um, we still currently have two positions open in public works so if anybody knows of anyone a mechanic or for a labor foreman let us know for our town hall and they'll get in touch with us um, we own uh, we let's see the last storm we had uh, we discovered yet another stormwater failure on second street um it's a catch basin issue more than it is anything but it does lead into a ter <coughs> terracotta pipe which goes into the street so we're going to have to do some street digging um it's going to be fairly deep we've got a contractor available and has given us a price to do it um that one's not as high near as high as the other 
issue. But what we're going to do is <coughs> instead of doing the full street paving on the second street, the main, the first one we had, um, we can back that out, just do a complete patch and then use that money. And basically we can cover both repairs in the same money that was allotted in the budget. So that's what we'll do. And then when the paving comes around, then we'll just schedule that street for paving. That sounds fine with everyone. The, um, the end of this month, the first of next month is going to be a busy one. So um, Thomas the Train will be in town uh, the last weekend of September, first weekend of October. Um, that, uh, you'll expect more traffic in town during that time. Um, then, of course, the National Night Out will be on the first. And then we will be having the uh, Race to the River event again on the 21st, which will be not this Saturday, but the <coughs> Um, and I'd like to thank TJ again from the county, TJ Brown. He's going to help <coughs> the, the barrels and the cones to be able to keep everybody safe. So I will be happy to answer any questions that you may have. All right. The other thing I'll add kind of along those lines is on um, our 17th Street stormwater project. Um, not the CCAT portion, but the other portion. We did receive word yesterday, I believe, that we have our Army Corps permit for that work yeah i saw that it's like really <laughs> so that that is good news at and least one of the permits at least reviewing them yeah. i guess any questions on public works all right thank you sir thank you appreciate it all right next miss can our uh, finance report Good evening, Mayor and Board. Um, there's a couple of things that I wanted to update on. Our audit, I spoke with the auditor on, I think it was Wednesday, Tuesday or Wednesday last week, and because um, we had some issues with our property taxes and some of the schedules that come through, Rowan County went through um, a software update and some of their payments were misapplied between current, the current year and prior years so it left us as one of our outstanding levies was in a negative amount which is not something that we want to have so we're in research with that we know the issue is just getting the numbers corrected and hopefully we can get that done this week um, and I've asked for an updated list of things that we need and when talking to Stephen at the audit at the audit firm um, he basically said we're on track, everything looks good, they're putting things together and working through things now, so everything looks good on their side to be on time. So, um, the Christy and Allison, on August 14th, they went to a seminar with um, the Utility Services sem Seminar that was hosted by some Salisbury Realtors. And that's basically just to refresh them of some of the processes with the Salisbury Rowan Utilities and how our residents, um, if there were any, any need with that, um, just to how, how the flow goes with new residents, any issues, and just some of the upcoming things that they have going on, just to refresh them with that. And they made some contacts there as well so that we can better um, support our citizens in that. And then... My report, you guys have my financial report. There's two line items in there that I'd like to bring to your attention. Um, the first one is on page, I think it's page three. It's the police line. There's a $190 negative balance, and I just want to let you know that that was an error on our part where we did not, it was just an error on our part, and it's corrected now, so that line is not in, in the negative, okay? The second one is the overtime and fire. I just want to be transparent with that, that we've had the discussion with Landing on that. And the reason why that is over is because we had three new, our three new hires went to their EMT class from July 19th until, July 31st until August 19th. And that was an 8 a.m. to 5 p.m. class. And with that, they also covered their shifts. So. Um, we have corrected that. We pulled some salary from the open position that that they have, some of the funds there, and um, made that budget change. Um, and we know that we have to be tight on that, but on that overtime budget as of as of now. So 
I just want to let y'all know that we are being proactive on that now. Are there any other questions? Any, any questions about the report? Or any questions on the finance report? Okay. Thank you. Perfect. Thank you. All right. Next is our library report. Ms. Ward. Good evening, Mayor and Board. Um, there's not a whole lot to report this month because Beverly is coming down from the summer reading program that was you know, such a success, but she is working on a couple of items for next month um, as well as December. Um, so those are still in the works. She has a little bit of information. Um, <coughs> local English. poet uh, Lady Sarah <coughs> Paris will be uh, reading some excerpts from her poetry book and a um, uh, I believe a local keyboardist and singer um, will be performing as well. So keep an eye on the Facebook page for uh, more information on that. And uh, she is working on the this year. She wants to do a Caribbean <coughs> Christmas for her um, December event. Uh, so that sounds like it will be a lot of fun. So keep an eye out for more details on that as well. All right. Thank you. Board, any questions on the library report? Okay. Um, we will move to the town manager's report, but before we do, I know Scott Shelton from the EDC is here. Anything you want to update us on this evening? Yeah, great. Thanks for letting me speak. I know I didn't Thanks for ask you to put on the agenda. Um, Thursday, but um, this is our at a glance kind of keep up with the chief staff in the NEC for each month and the type of people that are going to highlight. Mainly just wanted to uh, focus on um, projects. You see uh, 81 projects there at the top left corner, and a, a project, of course, is when we receive a request for a site or a building or a program or a service that could assist a company in locating in Rowan County or expanding in Rowan County. And they're qualified the projects when we have that building or that site or that program that could work for a company. And right now, as of uh, today, we're at 81 qualified projects for the calendar year. Um, that's actually ahead of last year's pace. We were at 76 this time a year ago, which is a good healthy increase. And we're also qualifying a higher number of new projects, uh, or higher percentage of new projects compared to last year. I think last year this time we were qualifying 70% of the leads that were projects we had, now it's 75. I think that mainly is a result of the increased inventory in the county of buildings and sites. And um, developer activity overall in the county remains strong. We've got uh, 10 buildings either underway or completed. That totals about 3.1 million square feet. Uh, with an additional we have 16 million plans at some point in Rowan County and we know that there's several properties in the Spencer area that are being talked about or being planned such as you know the Johnson Development Project, you know Willow Creek, Lamb Fisher and of course we'll be ready to market those properties and submit them for sites when the time is right when those actually have a, a date to, uh, to move forward. And then uh, just also wanted to update the board on some upcoming events. Uh, EDC is co-sponsoring a job fair for the community uh, next Wednesday the 18th from 1 to 3 at the West End Plaza, the old mall. And um, job applicants can sign up. Uh, we've got some flyers I want to leave here, maybe to post at Town Hall, but applicants can sign up on the QR code or go to Eventbrite if they want to go ahead and load their resumes ahead of time. We've got several employers signed up for uh, representing manufacturing and distribution jobs and maybe maybe some office jobs too. I hadn't checked today, but we have a few of those as well. But again, encourage the community to come out for that if they're looking for a position. Also, uh, we're having our second annual developer and broker appreciation event next Thursday the 19th from 5 to 7 at the SDL Club in downtown Salisbury. Um, we've had several developers commit to this so far, and it's our way of thanking them for investing in Rowan County. Uh, we have a few extra spots available as well. We'd love to have someone from Spencer uh, attend with us, Ms. Sledge or whoever. Uh, if you want to attend, just please give us a call or shoot us a text and let us know. And then also we're going to be celebrating National Manufacturing Week in early October. We have several events planned, including 
uh, facilities tours for high school students to look at you know, careers in manufacturing. And uh, stay tuned for more details. Kendall in our office is working on that uh, pretty hard. And then finally, our EDC board meeting is Thursday, this Thursday at 3.30. I know Ms. Sledge attends faithfully, but also all of y'all are invited to attend as well. I just let us know. And then just want to wrap up by thanking the board for its continued support of the EDC, as always. I have to answer any questions. Thank you, Mr. Shelton. Any questions on the Economic Development Corporation report? All right. Thank you, sir. Thanks for being with us tonight. All right. We'll move to Mr. Francis and his uh, town manager report. Well, I'll, I'll actually note that we saw a photo of Mr. Shelton from 1996 uh, in, in the old building uh, yesterday. We were in a storage room and there was a composite of uh, every elected official and staff of the town, and, uh, which was quite interesting. And, and, and your photo was there. You look quite distinguished. Uh, uh, I, I, was, I was several pounds heavier back then, too, but I recall Steve Shank, the police chief at the time, that was something he came up with. I do recall that. that uh -huh. funny. A long well, time ago. If you want to come and take a look at it again, we can get you in the closet. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Thank you, Jim. All Thanks. Right. <laughs> okay. Um, well, thank you all, and I, I have a few things I'll mention. And we already talked about Race to the River, but we do have uh, some marketing materials that, that have been coming fast and furious and will continue over the next few weeks, but we do have some brochures here at Town Hall if folks are interested in learning more about how to sign up, but of course we have it uh, available online both on our website, spencernc.gov, and also rowancreekweek.org. You can find out about not just Race to the River, but the whole series of Creek Week events that kicks off this Saturday. Uh, there's a kickoff at Horizons. Uh, I'll be there about 12 to 3 and hopefully encouraging some folks to sign up for the race. Uh, my understanding is I'll be provided a blow-up kayak as well as part of the display. So uh, we'll see how many kids want to get in that and pretend to <laughs> go down the river in it. Uh, so a few, a few other things I'll mention. Uh, we have closed out our Yakin River trailhead project with Hall Contracting. And um, you know, we have some remaining funding uh, in, the, in the project fund that we'll be able to use for uh, the remaining landscaping that needs to be accomplished up there. But then perhaps uh, we'll be able to identify whether we uh, use that funding for other items up there at the river or uh, identify a different purpose that we might need to do that, but we'll want to get through the landscaping and, and uh, see where we land where we land on that. We have kicked off our classification and pay study update on Friday. We had a uh, a virtual kickoff with our consultants at the PTRC. They, of course, are the group that did our study originally. Uh, it's been about four years and. There's been a lot that's changed, uh, both in the market, but also within our organization. So this is a, a, a way to make sure our classification, um, our, all of our classifications are correct and that then they're uh, graded accordingly based on both internal and market forces. And uh, we've budgeted for the study in this year's budget. <coughs> the, we have not budgeted for any implementation. So once we find out the results, um, and some options, some implementation options, then we'll be able to explore what that looks like, uh, whether we think we'll be able to accomplish uh, some things within the current year, um, or whether we need to plan you know, on the future uh, budget cycles. We may have some, uh, some interim steps we wanna take in certain areas to make sure we don't get behind. And so those are all the things uh, we're considering as that kicks off, but it'll be a busy uh, few weeks as our uh, everybody in our organization gets involved with that and we get all the, the data back to uh, the PTRC. And uh, the other thing I wanted to mention is we're in the midst of an update of a uh, what's called the Iredell Rowan uh, Regional Hazard Mitigation Plan and that's a, an opportunity from time to time to make sure that all the community hazards out there are documented in a way that when it's time for uh, federal funding, particularly from FEMA, and others to come up with projects. Uh, this is a process to, to identify those needs so that hopefully the resources can come later and it's a, a collaboration with all the government entities in uh, both counties. So um, I, I wanna give kudos to our staff. Uh, this town of Spencer was the only uh, 
participant in those two counties that submitted the initial data request on time. And yeah. so uh, thanks to our staff that got involved as requested and we got our homework turned in, uh, got the gold star. And so uh, I'll be happy to answer any other questions you might have. Or any questions for Mr. Grantees? When does that survey close out? The, oh, oh, for the mitigation plan? <laughs> uh, you know, that's a good question. I, that's a, let me, I'm, I have it open. Let me see if I can click it and, and, it, and see if it'll show me an answer. Um, I, I think it, I think it's open ended from what I can tell. Um, I don't recall any dates. At some point, it's going to have to close out, but it appears like they're still taking responses. If, if you're interested, I, I know I looked at um, a hazard report some years ago, and uh, there was not anything listed in their report about any um, collapse of roadway or anything like that. Um, yeah, I wonder if there should be, since we're seeing some of that in town. Hmm. So, uh, you know, the, the idea of this survey is to capture what individuals have experienced, you know, and, and start to collect that data. So I'd say if, if, if you haven't taken uh, a moment to fill it out, I'd encourage you to do so and let your voice be heard in it. And there is a way on there to add other. Mm -hmm. Okay. To specify if it's not an option to select, you can add other other options. Just a quick question on the pay study, and I, and I realize they're kind of going to tell us this in a way, but um, are, are we still seeing kind of the leapfrogging from towns and counties and cities? Now, I know we talked about it the last couple of years where you know we raise. X pay for Y position, then town A does the same thing, and then town B does it, and then, then you know, we're back here six months later asking for another, and, and I only say, I, I know that's just part of it, but I'm, I've got to think that's going to slow down eventually if it's not already. Well, we definitely are seeing it. Uh, we, we had made adjustments and gotten ourselves in a very competitive position. I'll, I'll just take police pay, for example. Uh, our police pay w was in a very competitive position position when we adopted uh, the, the pay plan we're currently using in 2021. Uh, within a few years, we, we made an adjustment to that. Uh, we've made adjustments across the board, actually, on a number of things. But uh, but right now, we're we're not. We're not in the competitive position police-wise. And, and there's been, a, a, I think, some of the market forces to the south are driving that. And, and others are playing catch up. And, um, you know, rather than throwing darts, at, at it, we want to use this approach to make sure we're considering all the factors and, and what our solution should be. But, but yes, there is um, there, that that issue is certainly ongoing, and whether it'll slow down, or speed up, or change, yeah, I, I would like to think it would things would stabilize, but it seems like uh, that may have already happened. If it was going to, I, it's hard to tell. Any other questions on the manager's report? Okay. Hearing none, we'll move to request and comments by mayor and board, and we will uh, start with Miss Moody this evening. Oh, I never get to go first. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I just wanted to say that it is um, a privilege to sit on this board and serve the community of Spencer, um, and it was really nice to see so many faces in the audience tonight and to have people come for public comment. And I would encourage that to continue. Um, I think being able to express yourself, give feedback um, is so critical and important um, in our community and in all communities. So thank you for everyone who was able to take the time to do that tonight. Um, and I think this is a particularly exciting time for the community of Spencer and North Rowan. We have a lot of amazing things coming up. So um, just an extra plug for National Night Out, October 1st. Um, park project will begin officially that night, I guess, which really exciting. So just a great, exciting time for Spencer. We have a lot of fun things coming up. Thanks, Mr. Al. I uh, could not have said it better myself, so I will uh, uh, be quiet and let her words speak for Miss <laughs> <laughs> uh, Sledge. Oh my gosh. Um, 
had even thought about what I wanted to say today, but um, I want to thank the Public Works folks for all the work they do. Um, I had a huge amount of brush cleaned up one day this week and then had three big bags of loose stuff that was picked up yesterday, I think it was. And uh, I want to say thank you for that. Um, I had a report from one of the individuals who had applied for chickens, and she says that her five girls are settling in really nicely. <laughs> and she uh, actually sent me a picture of the, uh, of the chickens and her coop. So uh, she was very grateful to be able to do that. Um, I will be uh, participating in some of the Creek Week things. Um, not this week, not come this, let's see, is it this coming week? I believe it starts, starts this Saturday. Uh, there's <clears throat> there are a couple of uh, opportunities to take some trail hikes, one in the Standback Forest, and there's also one in the uh, Catawba College uh, Ecological Preserve that's available. Um, i trying to think what else I've signed up for, <laughs> but um, those are always good opportunities to see yeah, the resources that are out there and, and what our community and our county has to offer. Um, last year I was able to go to the Salisbury Road Utilities and, and tour their facility and see what they were doing. Um, so thank you all for the, to everyone who gets involved with that and puts that um, on. I don't know whether I will try to race to the river this year. <laughs> <laughs> but um, I may try to get down there to see the finish. <laughs> but um, thank you very much. Again, it's, uh, it is a privilege to serve. And um, thank you all for comments that you make. If you don't tell us what you have on your mind, we can't read your minds. So thank you. Thank you. Mr. Muhammad. Well, in closing, I would like to say it's good to see some of our residents and business here in town present in the meeting this evening. And also too, <clears throat> thanks to Lynn and Heather for coming with the updates about the Spencer Holiday Caravan. The National Night Out, as we say, is coming up. And just hopefully more residents will get involved and come out because it's very important for us to hear what <clears throat> you all have to say via public comment or letting us know directly so that we could reiterate that to the board so that we can um you know move forward productively and everyone is informed um with that being said i also would like to thank the staff department heads for the work that they're doing for this town as well as the board and everyone have a blessed evening thank you mr muhammad mayor Pruto. um i want to give a special shout out to the fire department uh, based upon this article that I read in the paper on September the 1st. That, um, and I'm going to read just a little bit of it. There was an incident right across the street from me uh, where someone's throat closed up and um, he was he did not he was not aware he had he had never been allergic to wasp stings, but it was a wasp thing. But he knew something was wrong. And I'm just going to read a little bit of it and I just think he says it better than I can. He said he quickly dashed to the end of my driveway to be there upon the first responder's arrival. I don't live far from the Spencer Fire Department, just a few blocks. I could hear the sirens activated and I tracked them with my ears as they drew closer. I've had a lot of time to process everything since then, but I still can't make heads or tails of those five minutes or few minutes. A brief, as breathing grew labored, each second seemed to pass faster than the last, yet somehow it all seemed like those few minutes were actually a few hours. After the dust settled, I learned that Spencer Fire Department's response time was a prompt two and a half minutes from dispatch to arrival, including the roughly 90 seconds of transit time. When they arrived, I was like the, it was like the cavalry had shown up. Reinforcements who off. In tow from the fire department were Chief Michael Lannon, Captain Donnie Myers, Engineer Jake Nichols, and Firefighter Lexi Collins. Collins, I have since learned, actually had just completed her EMT class two weeks ago. Sticking me with her, the, I forgot how you pronounce that word, 
Epi Pen. Epi Pen. Epi Pen. Yeah, just Epi Pen. Epinephrine. Epinephrine. They always they always got me covered here. Uh, they she the only thing she had practiced on at that time was an orange. My typing this today is evidence that she paid attention in class, for which I am grateful. And uh, I just thought that was an excellent way that he recognized our fire department and our EMTs, and I'm very proud of them. And he goes on to praise the ambulance people and everything, too, but I'll agree you all of that, because I was focused on our fire department. But thank heavens for all of these people who do emergency services in Rowan County. Thank you, Mayor Pro Tem. I've got no additional comments this evening, but we do have a need to go into executive session briefly to discuss the purchase of real property. And so if there is a motion from the board to go into executive session, we will take that now. Um, Mr. Mayor, I noticed that uh, Joe Morris was with us today. Did he have anything to add? To Joe us? Morris will stay with us through executive okay. session. This <laughs> okay. Evening. All right. I move to go into uh, closed session. I'll second. Thank you. It's a motion by Ms. Sledge, second by Mr. Howe. All in favor? All right. All opposed? And we are in closed session. Thank you all for coming this evening. Really appreciate each of you for being here.